Hi and welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about independent, dependent, and inconsistent systems. So we talked about linear systems of equations, and we now have three types of classifications for them. So I'm just going to go through these one by one and talk about a little of what they look like. So our independent systems are going to have one solution. So these are the examples that we saw in the last video where our linear systems had one answer. In a two-dimensional case, this is going to be two lines that intersect at a single point. So there's a point of intersection and that would be our one solution. This means in two dimensions, the lines will have one point in common, or in three dimensions, the planes will have one point in common. So the planes, if we have three of them, will intersect and they'll have one point in common. And this would be the same if we even had more planes or more lines. They would all need to intersect at just one point for the system to be independent. Then the next two types of systems, dependent and inconsistent, we haven't seen examples of these yet, but let me just talk about what they look like. So a dependent system of linear equations is going to have infinitely many solutions. So for dependent systems, I like to think of this as a line of intersection. So if we have a two-dimensional case, this just means that our lines we were given are equivalent. So the lines would overlap if we tried to draw them. We're really just looking at the same line. Or if we were in three dimensions, this would mean our planes would intersect along a line. So whatever we would end up having, our planes would have an intersection that isn't just one point, but it's a whole line. For me, a dependent system usually means that I was given one equation that was a multiple of another, or it was just disguised in some way, so it looked different, but we really had a repeating process going on where the system wasn't all that interesting. It was just the same line or the same plane being given twice. Of course, this is going to be a little more complicated in higher dimensions that we can't visualize. Then lastly, we have inconsistent systems. These systems have no solutions. So I like to think of this as two lines that we were given, but they're totally parallel. They never intersect. And so there's no solution to this system. In this case, there would be no common intersection. So there's just no intersection between them. As I mentioned in 2D, this would mean that the lines are parallel. And in 3D, this would mean the planes don't have a common intersection point. So maybe two of the planes intersect in one location and two of the other planes intersect somewhere else, but they don't all have that one point in common. So there's no one solution that satisfies all of them. We don't really have to think of the graphical representations of these ideas, but I think it can be helpful to keep them straight and understand why there are three different cases. So I just want to make a few notes about these systems, and in the next videos, we'll start looking more at examples that show up with these systems. So I've talked here about two and three dimensions, but part of what happens is that we start working in higher dimensions. We just have situations that involve more variables than two or three. And so these become a lot harder to visualize once we're working in those higher dimensions, but the same principles are going to hold. The main idea here is that consistent systems will have one solution or infinite solutions, but the consistent system has a solution. There's at least a solution to it. However, an inconsistent system will have no solutions. There is nothing that makes it true. There are no answers. So these are our two main classifications is consistent and inconsistent. And within that consistent category, we can have independent or dependent. Being able to classify systems is important for us just so we can tell what's going on with the solutions. We wanna be able to say if there's one solution, infinite solutions or no solutions. Okay, that's it for this video. We'll start going through some examples in the following videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.